I'll start by opening SharePoint Designer 2010. Now I like to do this from the site I want to create content in. It is very easy to accidentally be connected to the wrong site. But when I go Site Actions, Edit in SharePoint Designer, I always know that I'm connected to the correct site. With SharePoint Designer open, I'll begin creating the workflow. In this case, I'll be creating a list workflow, so I click the icon for list workflow in the ribbon. I'll select the IT Service Tickets list because this is the list that I'll be connecting this workflow to. I'll name the workflow Manage Process for IT Service Ticket and put in a description and click OK. SharePoint Designer 2010 is ready for me to start inserting or typing conditions or actions, but the first thing I want to do is create a variable called title setter. This will hold the actual value of the title of the trouble ticket. Now I'm going to start the first log to history list where I will say about to set title. I'll go to the next line and click the mouse. I will then type set workflow variable. I click variable and choose Variable Title Setter. Then click the Expression Builder, that little button that looks like an F and an X, and choose Current Item, Service Requested, Title, and make sure and return this as a string. I'm going to clean up the title value with one of the built-in utility actions in SharePoint 2010. I'll choose Extract Substring from Index of String. And then I'll click String and the Expression Builder button and choose Workflow Variables and Parameters Title Setter, starting at position 4, and output to variable Substring. If I don't do this, I might get some weird string characters appearing in my title variable. Next, I'll choose Set Field and Current Item, where I'll set the current item title to variable substring. I'm going to add a log to history list here that says the title should be set. I'm also going to log about to assign task to tech support manager. In order to make it easier to see what I'm typing in, I'll click the string builder ellipse and get a nice size area where I can type my message and see it in its entirety. Next, I will assign a to-do item, which will kick off the custom task wizard. I fill out the form by putting assign a tech and adding a description of the task the workflow will be assigning. I'll choose the Tech Support Manager as the one who is in charge of assigning text to tickets. I'll then add another log to history list and type in Task to Assign a Tech Assigned to Tech Support Manager. At this point, I want the workflow to wait until the Tech Support Manager has assigned the task, so I'll have the workflow wait for the Technician Assigned field not to be empty. Once that is done, I'll set the service ticket status to assigned.
and log a message, the service ticket is now assigned to the history list. Now I'm going to wait for the service ticket status to equal closed. And then log to history list that I'm waiting for service ticket to be changed. Next, I'll send an email to the user who requested the service using a workflow lookup for user where I find the user requesting service. The email will say, your ticket is completed in the subject line, and in the body of the email, it will say, the service you requested, where I'll insert a lookup to the service requested title, is complete. I'll log, the ticket was closed, and request or emailed to the history list. Now I'll click Save. I'll go ahead and change the text in the step and then click Save again. I click the List Workflow in the Navigation section, which brings up the Workflow Summary screen. From here, I can set the start options. For now, I'll click the workflow to be manually started or when an item has been created. I click Save. And then I click Publish. I now go to the list in the browser and click the List tab and then the Workflow icon and verify that the workflow has been deployed. In the next movie, I'll test the workflow and make any adjustments necessary. 